Um, hello everyone. Um, I'm going to talk about myself, but sorry if my throat, um, my my voice goes. I lost my voice a few days ago, and it's just returning, so it's a bit croaky. But I'll go um, as fast as I can through all of this without stepping over myself. Now, my name is Dr. Mark Bailey. Um, by day, I guess you could put it that way, I'm a speciality doctor in respiratory medicine, and by night, I am a clinician who codes. Um, and I've done quite a lot of coding, um, and quite a lot in Python, especially after my father bought me Arduino Yun, which has uh, got a Linux system on there and to code in Python. And quite a lot of that hobby work that I had um, came into my work and I started using open source programs, including Python in, um, in the trust. So I'm a middle grade doctor, I'm a clinician who codes. I'm also a board member of the NHS PyCon. Um, I'm also on the Faculty of Clinical Informatics. I'm a board member of the Early Careers Leadership Group and also a member of the Professionalism Standing Committee. I've just become a student again. I'm a cohort for NHS Digital Academy Digital Leadership student. And I have two students um, from Gloucester University. Nick and Joe should be on the call today, so hello to both of you, who are helping me with um, our new digital lung cancer pathway. Next slide, please. So what have I done so far? So yes, as I said, um, Arduino, which most of you probably know is a microcontroller um, that uses Ardu Arduino program languages like C++. Um, done a lot of that, a lot of Python at home as well. And in the trust, um, I built a program called Spiritum in Microsoft Access 2010. So not very open source or anything like that. But this is before I knew better in terms of what you can build at work. And this is what I had available. And I built this over a year to house the sleep, the tuberculosis and the bronchiectasis work that we're doing. And that inclu included RPA using the open source program language AutoHotKey. Um, and it could write letters, it can get data, it can move data around and things like that. Um, and then from that was a spin-off called Quick Spiritum. So that was RPA, Robotic Process Automation uh, Program again. And we did a little uh, quality improvement program on that and it showed that it saved 30% of clinicians time. Next slide, please. So what am I currently doing? So this is this is where things I think have gotten very interesting. Um, spiritum, the word spiritum is Latin for breathe. And we thought for a respiratory department where I work, it's a nice name to give the program that we're working on. So Spiritum Duo is our new database, but this time instead of Microsoft Access, uh, 2010, which is dying to death in April, I think next year, there won't be any support from Microsoft. Um, we are building it. Um, I say we, my students are doing most of the work at the moment because I'm sorting out the politics, which we'll talk about in a sec. Um, uh, we're building it uh, in an open source um, manner using Python and JavaScript script, um, TypeScript and all those interesting um, languages and, and there's sort of frameworks and libraries around that they're working on as well. Um, and we want to make this open source, like I said, but also modular. So we're working on the lung cancer pathway at the moment because I know about lung cancer, I work in respiratory, but we want to make it a general cancer or even a general disease pathway system. So taking patients from referral to treatment, um, but we can make it for any disease and actually other trusts could use it as well if it's open source. And this, this build that we're having, that we're building, we want to build it in a new Gloucestershire Clinical Informatics Hub. And that's something else that we're building at the moment. We got signer from the digital exec just about a month and a bit ago so that we can actually build the hub and also the pathway. So those are very exciting times, they are now, um, that we actually have the sign off. We have um, okay to do this collaboration with the university and so on. We can go to the next page. So as I said, um, it's still in the design phase, the clinical informatics hub, but basically it'll be a pipeline for innovation in the trust. They could expand further, but initially it'll be for the trust where anyone, be it patients, um, secretaries, porters, radiologists, doctors, nurses, anyone could use a web form, send us any ideas they have, no matter how great or how wacky or whatever, and we would rank them. And we'll do this openly, we'll show what kind of ideas we're getting, how we rank them, and we have to figure out exactly how we rank them. And then, you know, work from the top downwards. Now, the lung cancer pathway um, work is uh, the pilot, shall we say, for the Clostershire Clinical Informatics Hub. Um, but 
you know, once that's built and we've shown, hopefully shown benefit, of course, you can never really tell. It's more of an R&D um, situation at the moment that once we've shown benefit, we can hopefully expand and, you know, build other things and collaborate further afield. And there's interest um, with the local ICS uh, and also the uh, Southwest Cancer Alliance group about making maybe a, a regional, as in Gloucestershire, or even a Southwest clinical informatics so but you know starts I think big start small is my philosophy behind this um, so yeah we want to standardize the ranking of ideas involve all the stakeholders get the right funding and clinical governance sign off which any of you that know about building apps that can be quite as lengthy and slow process but we want to do it in a sort of an agile manner if possible um, and you know the whole um, CICD sort of um, approach and with a can do attitude rather than a can't do which for any of you that work in trusts it can be difficult to get um, sign off for making things happen quickly the sort of water flow uh, processes and everything stagnates waiting for the next process to come along but we want to have everyone saying yes this can happen but you know you need to do it in this way to make it safe and so on um, now as I was saying with the Southwest Cancer Alliance group they want that, that, that they've actually given us help us get the funding for the two students that we got along with the CCG so that's fantastic so we've got a whole uh, year with the two students um, and they're helping build the pathway um, uh, and the Cancer Alliance group and actually quite a few other um, interested parties as well want to get involved with this idea of a, a Southwest um, Clinical Informatics Hub and hopefully we'll be having a conference in March 2022 to discuss this we haven't formalized this exactly but once we we have you know the idea what it will be when it will be would it be virtual or hybrid or face-to-face or face-to-face face -to -face. i've got a bit of um teams fatigue myself um then we'll let you know all about that next slide uh i can't read that there we go oh yes so I'm, I'm quite jealous with you guys in NHSX. It seems like you guys can do open source and you have been for a while. And maybe I've, I've, I've you know, heard wrong, but it sounds like you guys have been doing it for a while and you can install things, you can pipe and all that stuff. In my trust, and quite a few trusts that I know about, they have trouble, for example, just installing Python on their computers. Now, I could do it with Anaconda because it's not putting anything to the register, I think, but actually installing Python properly into your command line, I couldn't do that. Uh, not without the proper access from IT, of course. And then I can't get onto GitHub, so I can't share my work that I've been doing in the trust. So we're doing off-site now. There's no um, patient identifiable information. It's all pseudo data, so that's safe. But we'll port it into the trust once it's done. I haven't got admin access, so I would have to get everything signed off by an IM and T team, uh, or you know, go for the, uh, IT um, support at least for everything to be signed off. And open source. With all the positivity it can bring, it's still um, viewed by some as possibly dangerous because it, it can be viewed as open data, which is not, but open data is a good thing in itself. That's a separate thing, but this is about open code rather than the patient identifiable information. As always, you know, open source is fantastic because you've got more eyes on it, more collaboration. You know, it can be much safer data. Next slide, please. So, um, I'm happy to take any questions now, but if you want to have a look at some of the other things I've talked about in the past, the quick spiritum, there's a, a YouTube video I've made with the FCI. There's a FICA podcast that I did with John, which just came out last week um, about the quick spiritum and also the lung cancer pathway. Uh, you can get hold of me on Twitter or email, or even you can look at my uh, GitHub repo. If you want to see the current work going on, look at the fork um, from Nick. Um, he's got the most recent work on there, but once we've got that up to a certain level that we have to show other people, we're going to put it onto our website, which is spiritandduo.com, and have it there for people to play with and give us feedback on. So anyway, 